Welcome everyone to chapter three. Here we are in section number one. We're introducing these things maximum and minimum values. Uh, and in this video, we're gonna be talking specifically about absolute maximums and minimums. And the claim is they don't always exist. Okay, so, uh, and we'll see that here in a second. So again, our objectives are defining these things, maximums, minimums, and be able to visualize them graphically. What do these things mean? We want to comprehend why absolute mins and maxes don't always exist. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about the extreme value theorem, which will help us determine actually when these absolute minimums and maximums do exist. Let's get to it. So first, uh, we're going to let C be a number in the domain of our function. Then we have f of c, right, the function evaluated at c, is an absolute, and sometimes this is called a global maximum value. So an absolute maximum value of f in the domain or on the domain if, well, the function evaluated at this value c is greater than or equal to the function for all x in the domain. Okay, and we'll draw a picture here in just a second. We'll see what this looks like. Let me give you the definition, right, for absolute minimum, or AKA a global minimum. So a global minimum value of F on its domain is kind of the smallest thing around, right? It's a value that's less than or equal to F of X for any X in the domain. Now, if we restrict this down, we can actually talk about local, right? So we have absolute and then we have local maximums and a local minimum. And as you would probably guess, well, so the local maximum value of F on the domain is where the function is greater than or equal to X but it's just local, right? It's for all x near c. And likewise for minimums, again, it's the smallest thing around for all x near c. And again, maximums and minimums are often referred to as extreme values. So that's why, especially up here, you saw we have something called the extreme value theorem. Well, this is gonna be talking about maximums and minimums, right? So whenever we wanna talk about both of them, you can sometimes just call these extreme values or even uh, extremum is a uh, word that exists. <laughs> All right, so as promised, let's go ahead and draw some pictures of these things to really visualize what's going on here. So let's go ahead and suppose, I'm gonna draw a nice uh, coordinate axis here. I'm gonna draw a fairly complicated graph. I'm gonna do something like this. So this is gonna be my function right here. And you can see actually that there are a couple local maximums. So let's go ahead and maybe I'll use orange here for fun. This right here is a local maximum, and this right here is a local maximum. So let me go ahead, say local max. I'll just draw an arrow to this one as well. So these are both local maximums, right? Because they are the biggest thing around. If these are our C values right here, anything near C, right, this has the highest function value, right? Again, kind of the function is Y equals some F of X. So these are Y values that we're talking about. Moreover, actually, this one right here is an absolute, absolute maximum. Because it actually has the biggest Y value for any of the function values on the domain. Kind of the assumption is that this continues kind of downward. So that right there is an absolute maximum. And then we actually have a, a local minimum. Maybe I'll use purple here. So a local minimum right here. Because again, kind of if you're around the C value, right, if you wiggle just a little bit left and right, kind of it's the smallest thing around, right? So kind of in general, anytime you have one of these valleys right here, you're gonna have kind of a local minimum. And anytime you have one of these hills right here, you're gonna have a local maximum. Now this local minimum right here is not an absolute minimum, right? Because there are smaller values, in particular down here, right? The function takes on smaller and smaller values kind of the assumption here is that it continues down towards negative infinity. So it's not gonna have any absolute minimum. So it has local minimums, but no absolute minimums. And so actually I have a remark down here, right? Maximums and minimums must be finite real numbers. So you can't say that the absolute minimum is negative infinity. That doesn't really make sense, right? So it has to be a finite 
real number. So then maybe in order to kind of complete the set, let's go ahead and draw a function here that has an absolute minimum. This would be something maybe like our good old friend uh, x squared. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a parabola here. And then here at this value, this would be both a local minimum and also, I don't know, I'll use green I suppose, this is also the absolute minimum. Okay, so things can be both local and absolute minimums, just like up here, this point was a local and absolute maximum. Sometimes you would just say absolute because kind of this trumps the local stuff. Okay, so another remark here is this book uses this near C to technically mean, right? What does this near C, this seems kind of wishy-washy. How near do you need to be, right? So, okay, the book uses this to technically mean uh, that the statement is true in some open interval containing C. So technically endpoints, they can't be local minimums or maximums, right? They could be absolute, but they couldn't be local. Uh, and sometimes, right, like I say here, these definitions can make you and me uh, crazy. So you do have to be a little bit careful with these technicalities. Again, this right here, this remark is just uh, letting us know that local minimums and maximums cannot be at endpoints. Now, if you go to a different textbook or something like this, uh, they may define it slightly different. It really does come down to the author of the textbook. So in our book, in our class, this is how we're defining uh, these uh, local minimums and maximums. All right, so we've already seen that sometimes, like up here, that local minimums, sorry, that absolute minimums don't always exist. And actually, in this case, there are no absolute maximums. There's not even a local maximum. So we want to kind of explore this. What are some other ways that absolute minimums and maximums may not exist, right? That's our second objective here. All right, so here we are. Uh, example, I'd like to explain why this function 1 over x on this nice closed interval, right, from negative 2 to 2, explain why there's no absolute minimum for this function on the interval. And the big idea here is that this function, f, is not continuous. So because it's not continuous, it's kind of allowed to do this trick where there's actually this vertical asymptote. If you wanted to be technical, maybe you shouldn't include zero here, right? But there's this vertical asymptote, and with this vertical asymptote, right, we keep on getting smaller and smaller values, right? The function keeps on decreasing as it gets closer to zero from the left. And again, absolute minimums and maximums, right, they need to be a finite real number. So if you say, for instance, that the absolute minimum was negative a billion, well, I'd say no, it actually reaches negative a billion and one, or negative a billion and two, and, or negative a trillion, right? You can't write down a finite real number, right, uh, that is the absolute minimum, because there's always kind of one less than that, uh, unfortunately. So this case, f is not continuous, that's why there's really no absolute minimum. And so maybe let me elaborate just a little bit more. So I'll say, so f keeps decreasing as x, oops, getting ahead of myself there, as x goes to zero from the left towards negative infinity, right? So that's really why there is no absolute minimum, but the claim is this trick wouldn't be possible if f was continuous. If f was continuous, you couldn't do this, right? So that's our first kind of main issue. f not being continuous is a problem. All right, the next issue, now we can see that we have the nice easy function x, right? So here it is, it's just a nice straight line, but we're on the interval zero to two. 0 to 2, and we're not including 0. So you can see that there's kind of an open dot there because we're not including that 0. Explain why there is no absolute minimum for this function on the interval. And really what this one's going to come down to is that we need a closed interval. So this fact that we're not including 0 is a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and write down we need a closed interval. <clears throat> 
So that's really the heart of why there is no absolute minimum. Let me explain what I mean by this. So if I go ahead and I say, okay, the absolute minimum is maybe 0 0.001, right? We can't choose zero, but let's do something very, very close to zero. Well, someone's gonna come, come along and say, well, that's not quite the absolute minimum, right? Because you could do 0 0.0001 for instance, or 0, 0.000, and maybe you could do 100 zeros. But somewhere, right, since you're not allowed to choose zero itself, somewhere there has to be a one. Whether it's, you know, after 100 zeros or after 1,000 zeros, right, you have to put a one somewhere because you're not allowed to choose the value zero. You're not including it, right? And so no matter how close you get, whenever you try to write down what the absolute minimum is, you're wrong, right? Because you have to write down a finite number, a real finite number, uh, it can't be zero because zero is not included in the interval. And as soon as you write anything else down, someone's going to come along and say, well, what if you did a couple more zeros, right? So the idea here is that no matter what number you write down, there is always one that's closer, there's always a, a different number that's closer to zero. I'll just say another number closer to zero. And so if you had this closed interval, right, if you included that zero right there, you wouldn't have any issues. Just like for actually, if you were to change this question around, and instead of an absolute minimum, if you were to ask what is the absolute maximum, well, because this is closed right here, it's just two, right? So there's no issue when you have this closed interval. But when you have an open interval, well, that's a recipe for sometimes, right, the minimums or the maximums, these absolute minimums or maximums, they may not exist. So our big two problems here are if f is not continuous and if you don't have a closed interval. And the claim is the extreme value theorem says so long as you don't have those two things, you're golden. So let me go ahead and write this down. If f is continuous on a closed interval a to b, then f attains an absolute maximum value and an absolute minimum value. On that interval. And my last remark before we end this video is that that's a beautiful, nice theorem that says, okay, so long as you're continuous and closed, everything's gonna be all right. You're gonna get this absolute maximum, this absolute minimum. Unfortunately, it doesn't say, and here's where it is, right? And this is how you find it. So this theorem's nice, but it only guarantees that they exist. It doesn't tell us how to find them. And that's what we're gonna go over next time. Unfortunately, the answer is algebra for the most part, right? So we have to do a little bit of calculus and then some algebra in order to actually find uh, some absolute maximums and minimums. All right, I'll see you then.